Yes, y'all, that be my man Dylan over there playing. Even when you feel like the game is no slaying. Like I said to y'all, even when I kick the vibe. Because they just had the other games on the riverside. But here we are at the fields of the high. The sports of the complex that makes me feel dry. Well, take a look around. Everyone's in action. When you got the daily podcast, I'll be happening. Even when I'm rapping on this microphone and beat. That's when I say, yes, the hypertone is my shit. That's when I never use it as a receipt, my cuz. But when you take a look at this tournament, it's love. 1100 game talking about, that's a risk. But that's what I love. It's the game I truly miss. But thanks to Brother Chris for giving me the shot. For giving me the shot. Everything is on top. Because I would never drop everything. I would never stop it. When I use this as a metaphor or optic. So give me just a topic in return. Have a look around here. Everyone's earned. Just like you have them. Because every time I grab them. And now I say shout outs to the Brother Adam. Because he was in the zone before. Everyone was listening. Even for myself. Y'all speaking my opinion. I grabbed this mic like I said it before. I came through the door. Yes, I want more. Thank you, Nottingham. Thank you to England. Thank you to the whole country. You know what I'm thinking. Just to come back and get me citizenship. Because when I'm over here, man, I hope you're listening to this. Hey, one time, like you take a look. Everyone around here from Instagram to Facebook know my name. The strategy is not the casualty, but it's the unfortunate reality for all the haters out there trying to diss it. That's why I'm here, because you never want to miss it. I grabbed this microphone, like I said, one more time. Like, looking at today, up there's the sunshine. Man, it's kind of hot with the temperature it's on. When you feel the temperature goes just beyond. I'm going to do the commentating just between Lebanon and Australia, so let's get it on. Hi everyone, and we're bringing all the action to you live from Riverside. This is the final day of action down here at the fields at Riverside with the Seniors and Masters Divisions. It's a fantastic, beautiful day of touch. We're going to take you around all the fields actions, do some interviews with some players and referees, and also take you through the Fen Village here at Riverside. So join us for all the action. I'm with Yelly, who's the captain of the England Women's 40s Division. This is the very first year for a Women's 40s Division here at the World Cup. Yelly, what does that mean to you personally and to the wider playing group? Uh, it just means so much that we can like still be playing at this age and still be elite athletes um, and managing kind of your job, your family, but still be able to show how much we can do. Um, it's just, it's an absolute privilege. It's a pleasure. So. And there's a huge number of players in your team that I know personally who are not only playing for England, but who are such an important part of club touch. What does it mean to them? Yeah, massive, a massive amount. Like they put so much into the game and to be able to have that opportunity to play as well. Um, like the coach, the amount of coaches we've got, the amount of people that bring on the youth teams um, to be able to then still play in a World Cup is just, it's fantastic. It's amazing. And this is a historic team, women's team to match it with New Zealand with your draw earlier in the rounds. That was a fantastic game that I watched personally from the sideline. What is the team's aspirations for this World Cup, especially after that game? Uh, get in the final, 100% get in the final. Uh, we absolutely believe in ourselves and believe that we as a team can win that semi against the Kiwis um, and take it to Australia in the final. Thank you, Yelly, and good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thank you very much. Welcome to Taking the Plunge with Mel Day. Here I am with... Adrian Bellalonga. From the Australian men's team in the... 45s Division men's. Now, 
A couple of quick fire questions. Yep. What's the tightest muscle in your body right now? My gluteus maximus. <laughs> That's also my favorite <laughs> muscle in the body, so quite a coincidence. Uh, if you had to go on holiday to another nation who's playing in the World Cup, where would you go? Uh, it would be Spain, who we just played, and I'm there next week. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks for taking the plunge with me. No problem. See you next time. I've got a couple of players from the US team here. Some short, sharp questions, lads. Favourite warm-up stretch before a game? Uh, figure four. Favourite hype song before a big match? Beastie Boys, anything. Best post-tournament meal? Uh, I like a chicken parmigiana. <laughs> and when I meet you at the after party, what, should, what drink should I buy you at the bar? I'm the wrong one. I'm a non-drinker, so I like horchata. <laughs> What's been uh, what's been your experience refereeing this tournament, man? Um, it's just just um, having the, all the different cultures here and everything like that, and refereeing all the different countries. It's been pretty cool and running with the different referees from all the other countries. It's been cool. I've liked it so far. Whereabouts are you from in the world? Uh, Sydney, Australia. So, bit of a hike, but yeah. <laughs> Um, how many Touch World Cups have you been to, my man? Oh, this is my first one as a referee, so it's pretty special. Hey, man, well, cherish it. Oh, penalty, penalty. Like, uh, what's your predictions for the final and who you think is going to win it? Uh, I think in the men's open, I think maybe maybe Australia I think can go back to back World Cups and maybe in the women's, but not sure about the mix, but I think Australia might get their chocolates. So, um, hey, <laughs> hey France, can I ask you something? Uh, are you able to say something to the people back home in France if you can speak your language? Uh, vive la France! <laughs> Thank you very much. It's still 1 0 to Australia. Ooh, good defense, good defense, good defense, and also a good attack. It's like the lady said last night. New South Wales won it last night, fair and square. It is what it is. Let's move on to the next day. Different chapter. I hear, hear the boo already. Love to my guy. Of course I do. Yeah. Well, just last night, everybody wrote the bail. But who won the state of origin? New South Wales. They beat the Queensland. That's 14 to 4. But here we are at the game. Here is a war between Australia, man, versus Lebanon. You got the cameras out, man. You got to bring along. But just last year, it was all Queensland. But this year, it's the NSW. You still understand. But every single year, man, the plans do change. But when you think about league, it doesn't feel the same. You got the boys in blue represent the boys against 
is in Maroon. When you feel about it now, but here today's the afternoon. Well, check it. I'm on the side with the mic. I'm doing commentating, man, because I feel that the light. I got England to France, Australia by my side. And if you want to think about this game right here, and that's the pride. Well, if it's crazy, one of my favorite players from the New South Wales was Laurie Daly. The Bradley Clyde talk about the Glenn Lazarus. You think of the game, will it be so hazardous? Where you take off the run up from Australia against the counterparts, man, what's the savior? Here we go again, y'all, when you want to play. Here I am wearing a shirt from the USA, but I'm in the crowd and you got the mic over there. I'm right here and I ain't going anywhere. Love to the man, cause you just gave me a topic. All I really do over here is just to pop it. And if you really got to make the first C, but thank you to our friends over there, merci. And if I got the swat, if you make it more pure, if you ever go to France and you say bonjour, Australia defending their line. One thing about Australia is you never underestimate them. Penalty back to Lebanon. So here we are in the fan village, the Big Melt. What a sensational food truck this is. Supplying some of the tastiest grilled cheese sandwiches you have ever had. I can attest to that. I've been a big fan. The caramelized onion, the double bacon melt, mate. Tell us all about what it is you're bringing to the Touch World Cup. Uh, we're bringing cheese toasties to the fans here. We're here all day serving the best cheese toasties you'll find in England. In fact, probably the world. Probably the world. Mate, that is the tip that I've been giving out to everyone that I've been walking around. Make sure you go and visit the team at the Big Melt. It, we can't ask for anything more. You're serving it up all day long. Enjoying the atmosphere. What's it been like to, to get involved in the atmosphere of a World uh, Cup? The atmosphere has been absolutely electric, start to finish. Rugby fans from all around the world, we've been loving it. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. We really, really appreciate it. And I'll be back in the morning for another one to kick off my day. Making our way around the fan zone, I meet Adam, of all people. Two Adams in the one spot. Adam, welcome to Nottingham. What a great event this is. Yes, it's been really, really good, actually. Super fun so far. Very intense games. I, I'm so excited. And I see the tricolours of France down here, but up on top, we also have Malaysia. Mate, give us a little bit about where you've come from and who you're here supporting. So I'm I'm from Malaysia, and so my sister is in the mixed open team right. for Malaysia, but my girlfriend is French, and so she's in the women's open team, so I'm supporting both teams. Luckily, they're not against each other, otherwise I'd be very conflicted. And how much are you enjoying the fans out here? Great atmosphere, food trucks all around the big screen. Yeah. You having fun? Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. I actually got to see, I have some people from the US, uh, was it men's 50s team who are playing, and there are a lot of times they're on the big screen. There's a lot of good food as well. So I've been having the dim sum, and also we just had some crepes. I've also had like the cheesy food over there. There's a lot of food. I'm Love it. it. You're a man after my own heart. You got a group behind you. Let's yeah. see what they have to say about the World Cup. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. The people you meet as you make your way around the fan zone, Glenn Eaton, the Australian team photographer, fourth World Cup mate, and I hear on the grapevine, the last one. Sad but true, my friend, sad but true. We've, um, we've been to four, as you said, you know, 16 years basically as an Australian photographer. Uh, my poor old knees have decided to pull the pin on me, so. I hear you, brother. Yes. yes. How, many, how many photos do you estimate you've taken in that time? In the time for Australia, I reckon it'll be close to about a half a million images, to be fair. So all of those action photos you've seen from previous World Cups, this is the man behind the shutter, Glenn Eaton, or Glenn Dog, as I like to call him, long-term friend, mate. Absolutely. Thank you for your services and support. It's been outstanding. And some of those images, they'll live on when you and I are both no longer here. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Great to see you. All right, brother. Well, what a massive day it's been here for day four of the Touch World Cup in Nottingham. Some incredible results, some first timers as well, Mel Day. Take us through one of the big upsets of the day. One of the big upsets today is the England women's 40s beating the New Zealand women's 40s. I believe they're the first women's team to beat New Zealand outside of Australia. So a huge result for them down at Riverside today. And England also involved in another bit of a boil over too. A boil over, but not in their favour this time. The Germany senior mixed team beating England, which I'll have to look at the record books, but I think that might be their first time. So an amazing result for Germany. 
Very, very possible indeed. One of our most recent games toward the end of the day as well. Sweden just getting home by the skin of their teeth in the men's 30s over Spain, 5-4. They've got to wait for other results to come in to see if they'll be playing in the finals. Of course, that takes place tomorrow. We see the start of the finals. We'll touch on that in just a moment. One of the other great games that took place across day four, Lebanon and Australia. The Lebanese really took it to the Aussies. You need to tell me about this game because I heard it was an absolute cracker to watch. It certainly was. And led by their inspirational captain, Jason Stanton, Lebanon came out of the gates firing. The end result, probably not flattering too much for the Lebanese, but they'll take a lot of confidence away from their performance there. I think they are really building as not just a dark horse, but a genuine contender now for a podium finish. So that's some of the big action that occurred on day four. But taking a look ahead to day five, we know that finals footy is here. You can feel it in the air. I cannot wait for this. We've been operating at two separate venues, but everyone is up at Highfields tomorrow. We've got close to 12 hours of non-stop footy for you tomorrow. And in the afternoon, we start to see finals footy with some elimination finals in the mixed open competition and some quarterfinals in the senior men's competition. Certainly will. It's set to be a massive day for day five here at the Touch World Cup in Nottingham. It all gets underway at 8 a.m. on Friday morning. We can't wait to see you then. Until next time. Make sure you're getting across every single stream here at the Touch World Cup 2024. Welcome to England, the 10th edition of the Touch Football World Cup. Thanks to the Federation of International Touch, all the talking stops now. diverse cultural backgrounds so we've got players located in different countries in the world but they all have a connection to China so we're really glad to uh, have them uh, into the team. Well, Nottingham is the capital of uh, touch uh, in the UK which is great um, so we've hosted the Atlantic Cup um, hosted European Championships and obviously this event is just another level again but it's great to see that we can keep helping grow the sport and, and raise the profile of sport and do new things so